Justifying the Triangle Sum Theorem, Lesson 11.2b. A theorem is a general statement that is proved by a chain of reasoning. We can use our knowledge of parallel lines intersected by a transversal to informally justify the Triangle Sum Theorem. Remember from last video it said the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees? A postulate is a statement that is accepted as true without proof. They're also called axioms. Now notice it said we're going to informally justify. When you get into geometry, you're going to be doing formal proofs. This is called a two-column proof. We have our statements on one side and our reasons on the other. So we're not doing that this time. We're going to informally prove this. So to informally prove the triangle sum theorem, the first thing we're going to do is draw a triangle. We're going to label the angles as 1, 2, and 3. Then we're going to draw line A through the base of the triangle. The parallel postulate states that through a point not on a line L, so here we have line L, and here we have a point that's not on line L, there is exactly one line parallel to L. This postulate guarantees for any line L, we can always construct a parallel line through a point that isn't on L. Using that, we draw line B parallel to line A. So that's going to be our point that's not on line A. And line B is going through that point right at the top of our triangle here. It's going through the vertex opposite the base of the triangle. So now it's opposite this base and we have parallel lines. The next thing we do is we extend each of the non-base sides. So here's the base, so that's a non-base side and that's a non-base side. So we're going to extend them beyond the parallel lines. We're going to extend each of the non-base sides of the triangle to form transversals S and T, which intersect parallel lines A and B. We label the angles formed by line B and the transversals as angle 4 and angle 5. Now because angle 4 and angle 2 are alternate interior angles, they're congruent. So now we label angle 4 with the angle number to which it's congruent, 2. So this angle is congruent to 2, so we have a 2 here and a 4 here because they are the same degree measure. And because angle 5 and angle 3 are alternate interior angles, they are congruent. So now we label angle 5 with the angle to which it's congruent, 3. Now, angle 5 and angle 3 are alternate because they're on opposite sides of this transversal, and they're interior because they're inside these parallel lines, A and B. That's the exact same thing for 4 and 2. They're on opposite sides, alternate sides of transversal T, and they are on the inside of the parallel line, so they're alternate interior angles. The three angles that lie along line B at the vertex of the triangle are angle 1, angle 4, and angle 5. This means that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 is 180 degrees. It's along this line. Since angle 4 and angle 2 are congruent, and angle 5 and angle 3 are congruent, we could substitute angle 2 for angle 4 and angle 3 for angle 5 into the equation. So before we had 4 and 5 in the equation, now we're going to put 2 and 3 into the equation. This shows that the sum of the angle measures in a triangle are always 180 degrees. Since 4 is congruent to 2, we can say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, and 5 is congruent to 3, we can say plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees, and those are the angles of the triangle. If that's 180 degrees, and they're congruent, then we know the interior angles of this triangle are 180 degrees. 
in order for the angle pairs to be congruent, lines A and B must be parallel. If they weren't parallel, we wouldn't be able to use our alternate interior angles and the transversals. If we have parallel lines and we have a triangle, and the triangle is a right triangle, well, if we have angle 1 here, and it's the right angle of the triangle, that means angle 2 and angle 3 must be complementary, and the sum of their angle measures must be 90 degrees. We're finished with part 2. We're moving on to part 3, finding missing angle measures in triangles. I hope this made sense to you, and I hope I explained it well. If I did, hit that like button for me so I know you understood, and join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.